I was looking through just a Twitch list at one point of all these different creators who'd been streaming regularly on FM. And I thought, there's so many people there that there's more than enough room for more than one tournament, one competition. Hello all and welcome to the Scouting Centre, you know how this goes. We are interviewing your favourite creators for you to get to know their journey and get some advice from them as well. My name is Diz, Mr Diz TV. it would mean the absolute world to me if you could follow me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube and all the other good stuff as well. That would mean the absolute world to me, so please make sure you do. Please can I ask that you like this video, do it right now, subscribe to the channel, we're on our way to a thousand subscribers. It also helps me get this into the algorithm it would mean the absolute world to me. My guest today does a bit of everything in the FM community and it's great to see. He started streaming in May 2018 and that since then has accumulated over 3,500 followers. On his Twitch, you'll see him do a Broomhill FC save and he also works in real life with Broomhill Football Club broadcasting their games to the world. He's currently a Twitch partner. He makes Scottish Lower League Database, which you find as the number one downloaded database on Steam the last time I checked. Something that people love to bit. He's also a co-founder of the FM Playoffs with Kegman Plays, an alternative football manager draft competition, widely regarded as the number two football manager competition on Twitch. He's one of the few FM people who have been on the front page of Twitch. It is, of course, Maza. Maza, how you doing, my man? I'm very well, thank you for the, the grand intro. Appreciate yep. it. I'm really sorry I messed it up at a key point. It was, it was just going really well. I loved, I just something wrong slipped out of my mouth. I was like, God, what have I done? Uh, the, the beauty of editing, no one will ever know. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, um, yes, we would not include this bit in... Oh, well, I think I will. I think I will. How are you, Mazza? Great to see you, man. I'm really good, mate. Really good. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you asking me. No, no, it's... um, I'm, I'm honoured to have you on, to be fair. Somebody who does so much in the community bring so much you've always been a force for good in the community as well i found um and and i think we'll start just straight away with what got you into football manager so i've played fm for years and years going back to i think the first time i properly took it seriously was champ manager three it was cm3 and cm0102 that were the the main kind of like starting points for me to get properly into it um, I dabbled in a bit of LMA manager and so on as well, but I, I've always loved strategy games. I've never really been a, a kind of shooter game type person. It's always been a bit of rational thought type things that I like. So FM suited me down to the ground. Love football, bit of strategy, bit of management. And I was hooked. Just as soon as I got the bug, that was it. I've played pretty much every iteration ever since. So do you remember the first time you actually saw the game or picked up the game? Yeah, my dad got me CM3. Um, I think he actually got it for himself, but it was one of those that he said he got it for me so he could play it. <laughs> um, and it turned out, yeah, I kind of hogged the computer. <laughs> so um, I still uh, I still remember it. It was this kind of like light blue disc. For whatever reason, it didn't have the proper cover. He must have got it second hand or whatever. But um, I just I played the life out of it. It was a great game. So did your dad play it as well? He did, yeah, yeah, and he still plays, to be fair, when he gets a chance. Um, he's he's more of a retro FM player now, though he doesn't play the, the newer titles, it's more... I think the last new one he got was 2008, if I remember rightly. So he's somebody who would love um, the Mad Scientist 2001-2002 database, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I have shown him it, and he's a, he's a big fan. <laughs> no, and that's what I love about Football Manager, the fact is it crosses generations, doesn't it? Like, you wouldn't see the older generation and that includes myself and that playing FIFA for instance regularly whereas you see him playing like football manager with his son and stuff that's pretty cool it's something that I'd quite like to do if, um, if I'm lucky enough to have a, a little one when we go because it's going to get to the point I'll, I'll play this in my 50s yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know that for a fact so if I'm lucky enough to get there hopefully I get the opportunity to, to pass it down the line and then all these years later, you started to content create. Now, I've got you down as content creating in relation to Twitch in May 2018. Can you mm -hmm. tell me what inspired you to start? So I, did, I dabbled in the blogging side of things for about a year beforehand. 
Um, and I'd got to know FM Samuel. He was probably the first FM community person that I'd had proper chats with, um, mainly through the database side of things, because I was making the database by then. And um, I kind of gave blogging a go, and as much as I enjoyed it, it just there was something missing for me. And I, I didn't actually know about Twitch for a long time. I wish I'd came across it sooner, but I um, I used to watch YouTube and I'd came across Loki Doki. He was the first FM creator that I'd properly started watching one of his old journeyman series. And I got, I kind of got the bug to a point. I thought, I'm going to give this a try. Recorded one YouTube video and it was awful. And I just, it was kind of dull and monotone and I hated it. So luckily I came across Twitch and I realised that that's a means to an end for this kind of content that it forces you to get better in front of a camera and kind of voice inflections, all that side of things. So I jumped straight in, jumped in head first. First ever stream was on Wi-Fi, so it was a disaster, but I, I started learning these things. And um, yeah, it just steadily went from step to step from there. So how did you learn about Twitch? Because from YouTube to Twitch, obviously they're, they're two widely different uh, forums. Mm -hmm. How did you learn about Twitch? Was that via YouTube as well? Yeah, yeah. So basically I'd... Um, I kind of started getting my Twitter account moving by this point as well and connecting with other people who was mainly bloggers at that stage, but I was following a couple of the, the YouTube guys. And I can't remember whose stream it was that I first watched. It might have been Benji, but one of the tweets came out saying, oh, by the way, I've gone live. Um, so I jumped in and I was hooked immediately. Just the idea of th that instant contact, I just loved it as soon as I saw it. The you could just type a message in chat and people could just bounce back straight off you. I thought that suits me down to the ground because one thing that I'm strong in is conversation. I've always been a chatterbox, so <laughs> that was me. I was ready to get prepping and get started as soon as I came across it, to be honest. Well, when you think about it as well, so you've done blogging, database <laughs> making, you've done Twitch streaming, you also have done some YouTube. You've done, pretty much done everything, haven't you? I've given everything a go. Yeah, um, don't know if I'm a, a master of any of them as yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to I like to give things a, a try and, and basically see what works for me because otherwise you're potentially missing out on what you want to do. And that's kind of what Twitch was to me. I was missing out on it until I came across it because it is where I'm most comfortable. Absolutely love that attitude. So... What steps did you start taking to prepare then? So you started streaming via Wi-Fi. That hasn't worked. What steps did you take to prepare going forward then so you could get your stream to kind of where you are today? Well, it was a multitude of things because at the time I had one of those old all-in-one desks that just wasn't up to scratch at all with a computer that was awful. It barely ran FM and no more. So I was... At the point where I, I bought a second-hand computer after doing a lot of research into requirements like graphics cards and so on, um, and I bought an Ethernet cable, we got the internet upgraded. It was just, a, I had to do everything, not just the on-stream side of things. And I've still, to this day, I've still got a picture saved of the first ever overlay I used on-stream. And I thought it was great. I designed it all myself and... Um, it's awful <laughs> looking back on it, but like everything else, it's a gradual process of as long as you improve every time you do something, That that's kind of the main goal for me. Like regardless of what content or whatever else I'm doing, just kind of that slight improvement every single time gets you moving in the right direction. No, 100%. Did you always know you'd gone to some form of content creation even earlier on before you knew about content creation? I think so, in a way. Um, like, back in the day when it was the forums, like I used to be on the FM base forum back in the day quite a lot and the community forums, and you, stories were a big thing at that point. And there was a lot of guys that were good at creative writing that used to, to document their saves, and this is going way back. Um, and I used to do that as well. Um people might there's been one or two people that have recognized 
the the old username that I used to go under. It used to be under Morrissey before Moza was a shortened version of it. Um, so yeah, it, I, I I liked to have something in addition to the save itself that I always had that little creative spark. I think. So, you start content creation, and then you start the Scottish database. Mm-hmm. Tell me how that came about, and tell me why you were the guy to do it. Because no one else had done it. <laughs> um, so I've I've always been keen on non-league and starting at the bottom and going to the top style of saves. Um, and I was looking for a database and it didn't exist, so I just took it upon myself to do it, basically, that um, it, it became a yearly thing because, like, I, I would make it anyway because it's the way I enjoy the game. But other people started getting wind of it and started enjoying it and... I get a little kick out of that, I'm not going to lie. It's nice to to get messages from people, to get people jumping into a stream chat and saying, oh, thank you for the database, it's great, or X, Y, Z. Or, um, it, it's more that I now know that there are a lot of other people out there, like myself, who are into those lower reaches of our football. So it's not just all about the big boys. And I always thought that I was quite unique in that, but I realise I'm not now. There's a lot, there's a big, big community out there that are really passionate about the lower end of, um, of football, and they're not just Scotland, but the UK anyway, and that, yeah, it just, it grew arms and legs from, from there. And you spend a lot of time, don't you, on the lowly debt base, basically as soon as the editor's out, so it's available as soon as possible. Yeah. Is that something that you knew you would always end up doing? So as soon as you did it the first time, is that something you take pride in and it's yours? Yeah, I do. Um, to be honest, I, probably after the second time I did it, I knew it was going to be every year um, that it would end up happening, mainly because I realised other people wanted it as much as I did. So there's a little bit of pride in me that thinks, well, if I don't do it, someone else will do it, but they might not do it as well. And that I don't mean that to sound arrogant, but I'd like to think that I've got a wee bit more editor knowledge than the average person in that I forced myself to learn advanced editing to make the database as realistic as as possible and things like manual verification to force the editor to accept things that it shouldn't. And yeah, it's, um, it, it's as interesting as the game itself in a way for me that I just love to, to create things in there and just run them and test them and see what happens. How long can it take you to make that Scottish League database? Minimum of 20 hours every year. Um, This year wasn't as bad, but the longest it took me, at one point there was one that took me about 40 hours plus with reconstruction and so on thrown in. Because that's something else I do that not many people can do, that if there's league reconstruction after a year, I will put it in, if at all possible. So a year down the line, a lot of people don't realise it, you can change the leaks like as the game progresses and um, it, it's quite rewarding when you get a message through that say oh is, is this meant to happen like what's going on here it's like no that's that's real life you know so um, just I love learning things like that oh it does sound like that as well but then how does it feel when you look at the Steam Workshop and your database is number one surreal <laughs> is the word um, it was only there for a couple of days right enough the French one quickly got back on top but it, I mean it's a Scottish league so for the fact that it's it's not even the fact it's my database it's a big thing for me it's that worldwide enough people were interested in the Scottish non-league to download that and make it the most popular database that week is wild Any any other nation in the world it could have been and it was Scotland, so I, I just love that as well as a proud Scotsman, you know. I was going to say you are a proud Scotsman. Um, mm. At times, do you ever look at yourself and think I am the number one Scottish football manager streamer? Not really, um, because there's bigger creators than me that dabble mm. in it now and again. So I've got quite friendly with Ryan One One Eight who. It's mainly real football content he does. He's quite prominent in the Celtic community, does a lot of fan media for them. When he does 
football manager streams from time to time. He's bigger than I am. Um, CG Novo, similar but with Rangers, is bigger than I am. So it, I don't really see it as me being the biggest, quote unquote. But I kind of I more position myself as a Scottish Northern League guy, and I think that suits me. Plus, Mallard in some way is, is seething right now that he's uh, <laughs> you haven't mentioned him. Um, <laughs> uh, but then that brings me nice. I'm glad you brought up the real life stuff because you have this connection with Broomhill Football Club and you mm-hmm. broadcast their games live. Tell me how that came about. Um, so it came through the database. Basically, I was uh, getting in touch with all the, the Lowland League clubs this year. Um, I think it was 2015, 2016. But I was getting in touch with all the clubs to get my information on players um, because I was adding them in to, to my database that year. Luckily, I don't need to do that now because a research team that does it. And they got back to me. So it was BSE Glasgow at the time before we rebranded and said, right, so here's the information, but do you fancy kind of getting involved as well? Like we are, we're looking for website content and we'd love to get a football manager blog up from yourself and one thing led to another and that started so for a year I did a it was every fortnight I had a, a blog update on a, an FM save that then became as soon as I'd got going on Twitch LinkedIn with the club as well because I did a BSC Glasgow save for basically the whole of uh, FM 20 it was and took them all the way from the league up to the Champions League which is mad Um. And that got good traction as well. The club loved it because suddenly people knew for a, for a new club who they were and that's what they wanted. And uh, yeah, it's ended up with me actually getting involved with the club in a, a kind of real life sphere as well and doing live streams for, for home games, especially during the pandemic, which again was a great success. It's mad, isn't it? Because from streaming you now have this in real life bond with an actual football club who you actually support. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, and I've got to know a lot of people, like managers and players and stuff in on league as well, which is it makes it a bit more special when you're you're playing as these teams and you know the guys. Um, and I love it. Like I, I've, I even got to the point where I've I've helped our manager at times with match footage and kind of scouting ahead like finding footage for opponents we're about to play and the analysis side so that's a little thing that I, I might look to dabble in a wee bit more in future as well so hang on let me just add blogging streaming youtube databases <laughs> tournaments and now head scout <laughs> well you better not tell them i've called myself head scout they'll, they'll be worried they'll be asking for a wage next <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. But that is brilliant, isn't it? That is that is like the dream of any content creator to have something along those lines happen. Especially football manager-wise as well. Mm. It's amazing what the game can lead to. Like, that, all of these things, and I've had other opportunities come along as well, have all came through me playing this game. And it's, it's mad. I don't think there's any other game like it out there that can lead to so many different things. I wonder if football manager knows how much they can actually change lives, like the actual people at Miles and, and the backroom team, how much they can actually change lives just by this, the most in-depth simulator game in the world. I hope they do. Okay. I think Miles may have an inkling from some of the tweets he's put out there in the past, but yeah, I'd like to I'd like to think they do. I know they pay attention to a lot of things in the, the community, so um, it's not all bad stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Twitter was excellent this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in relation to that, then, so what are your future plans with Broomhill? I think it's um, just a case of waiting to see what happens because I'm I'm really happy to be involved behind the scenes now. Um, we're still very much a, a growing club. We're we're still playing away from home as such. Like for anyone that doesn't know, we're currently ground shading with Alloa which naturally isn't in Glasgow. So the club look, is looking over the next couple of years to get back to Glasgow. And until it does so, it's not going to be able to grow properly in terms of fan base and all that side of things. So that's the next big milestone for me, I think, in terms of when the club gets back. I can hopefully help to grow things more so than I have now because it's more it's more been awareness up to this point. I've grown 
or have helped to to grow people knowing who the club are um as bsc now is broomhill but at that point hopefully it'll turn into something more in terms of being able to attract people along to become regular fans as i've become and we'll, we'll see what happens from there so from your partnership with broomhill you're obviously doing a broomhill save now um, you've done uh, a lot of Twitch streaming over the last two years. You then become a Twitch partner. How hmm. did it feel when that came through that you got through? And then was that something you always aimed for or did it just happen? I think everyone that streams on Twitch has an aim to be a partner at some point. Um, it's not something that I'd specifically targeted until I realised there was a possibility. It was always in the back of my mind that I'd love to get there. I still don't believe I got it. Hmm. Like, Broomhill were the reason that I became a Twitch partner because it was during the pandemic where there was no football like to go to in person. Most games were behind a paywall and we were the only team at that time who were putting free live football out there for people to watch. And it, it got huge and other clubs started following suit, which was the other thing that was great. So... Other, like co-winning Rangers were one of them. Um, Caledonia Braves did it as well. Other Scottish teams thought they're onto something here. Like, let's do that as well. And we were all collaborating with each other, like the media guys be be between the different clubs and giving each other hints and tips. And it was great. I loved every second of it. We made a bad situation into a success. And ultimately, I got very, very fortunate off the back of it to become partnered and it was partly because I was bringing something to Twitch that was different in terms of live football and live sport and they want more live sport on the platform so it all married up perfectly and talking about that live sport we obviously just had the summer where you were heavily involved in the Twitch Sports Accelerator program so much so mm. that you were on the front page of Twitch and I think it was a Sunday morning um, it was it was this it was the final morning, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Or it might yeah, be the yeah. semi final. I was on there with you. It was a semi because it was yourself and Viking Dan. Yes, it was. Yeah. So thank thank you for that opportunity. Um, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> like, was that something that you you? I think out of everybody that I know, you made the absolute maximum out of that sports accelerator program. Um, I think you know you were doing your Euro twenty twenty morning shows um, regularly for like four weeks or at least every game day. Is that something you want to get more involved with in the future? Yeah, I had a deliberate plan in mind for it for about three months before I announced anything. I was always going to do shows for the Euros because I wanted to give the real football content a go on Twitch. Like, I've been involved with um, the Scottish Non-League podcast, the official catch-up for... A good few years now. I started that with people who know Rampant FM, Chris. Um, so the two of us started that together and that's become the podcast of Non-League in Scotland. Um, although I've not recorded it for a while. Mm. And I kind of wanted to give the the video side of things a go as well to see how it went. And I loved it. I absolutely loved the Euros. And I was really fortunate and I was able to get a great mix of content creators like your good self I even got journalists on. So I had um, guys for the Daily Record joined us. I had Andrew Todos, who's Ukraine's football expert in English language. Um, I had Scott Bain from the Belgian Football Podcast. All sorts of different people mixing and merging together to give opinions on the game. So it was everything I wanted it to be that it, it married both worlds together. I kind of I'm moving. Which is mad when you think about it. You've just named all those people there. And then you've invited little old me to your podcast as well, like, <laughs> or so, sorry to, to the um to the front page of Twitch or, or to your Euro twenty twenty show. Like, that's absolutely. So, what was your decision making process when you were deciding which guests to have on? But I always wanted to get that mixture of um, kind of real life football experience and also Twitch, because Twitch were good enough to show interest in it. So. It, it, it kind of it offers a platform to to other Twitch people. Like there was people on there who were also in the Sports Accelerator program that jumped in. Um, one guy, for example, in the month sports who is doing great things now. But 
this was very early doors and, and him being in the, the programme, he jumped in for the morning of an England game, gave his opinions and so on. And you see the kind of things he's doing now with darts. So he's taken a, a, a different idea and he's run with it the same way that I've done things with football. So, yeah, it was it was just trying to maintain that balance the whole way through and it wasn't going to get too kind of analytical for people that enjoy the the content side more, but at the same time, it was going to expose people to different voices that aren't, ne- aren't necessarily on Twitch. That's amazing. I'm, I've now got you down as blogger, head scout, <laughs> Twitch streamer, <laughs> YouTuber, head of the playoffs, and I've got podcast and and I've, an opportunity giver. So by the end of this, I'm basically aiming to have like 50 different kind of job roles for yourself. <laughs> Make me blush here, try and make me sound like FM Jesus. <laughs> FM Jesus, what a great name. Don't um, give me that. <laughs> so you mentioned Chris and Rampit FM. So Chris yeah. is obviously the guy who beat McKins 9-0 in the playoffs, the record ever um, game in the playoffs. We will talk about the playoffs Beautiful in a minute. Did you see what I did there? Um, but then you obviously mentioned the um, podcast that you do, the non league podcast. Tell me more about that. So yeah, that, again, it just started out of... Um, kind of interest in non-league. I, I was involved with Broomhill by that point. Chris was involved at Kelty Hearts and it was his idea. Basically, he got in touch with me and said, look, do you want to do you want to try and do this? And it was encouraged by Michael Parks, a guy at Broomhill who got me in and does all their social media stuff. He's brilliant. He's, um, to be honest, he deserves a, a full-time gig up the, the levels and I suspect he'll get it soon. Um, but he encouraged that we ended up getting going and people wanted it straight away because at the time I don't think there was anything like it in non-league. It was like Scottish media was all very focused on the professional league side of things and this was fan media just beginning to get moving. Since then, we've now got a few non-league podcasts that are all outstanding as well. I've got to say the, the standard goes up and up every every year. And PG and Dark especially. I'll give them a shout out. They've got a cracking podcast. But... um. Yeah, it, again, it was just another strength in my bow that I could try and improve myself in another way. And then going forward from that, what are your? Pl- you said you haven't recorded it for a while. Is that something you want to um, continue to do, though? Yeah, yeah. It's just a case of trying to fit everything in. In all honesty, um, like it, we've kind of got more commitments now. Like myself, Chris, and Ben, um, Ben Grant, who also does it with us, are all involved with clubs in one way or another so it's just finding the right balance and, and getting out there now and again but it, it's just slightly more sporadic than it used to be is the only thing um i want to quickly go back to the broomhill stuff so when you're filming the games so i hear a little rumor that you're quite the tech savvy person as well were you organizing all that as well or were you working with other people to help you set up um, yeah i'd basically do it um I basically do it myself. So I designed the overlays and all the, the graphics and all that kind of thing. Um, and I've got a stream deck. The stream deck is just absolutely essential. Otherwise, it wouldn't work because I've got to sit there more often than not in the freezing cold and just try and jab buttons and, <laughs> and try to change settings that way. But um, I'm lucky that I've got kind of basically a, a crew at this point that Donald does uh, the camera and he's very good at it. He zooms in and out and all that kind of thing now as well. Add something that Martin, who does co-commentary with me more often than not, again, has get really comfortable for a guy that wasn't really comfortable about being on camera or on stream. It's like Dr. Water now. is a, a more kind of analytical side of things. So I, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. But yeah, I do the design stuff myself pretty much every Friday before a game. And this is stuff that you've shared out with everyone and, and other people have shared out with you to cover the Scottish lower leagues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of regularly in touch with other guys from clubs and that in the, the vicinity of where we are. So we we all share best practice, share tips, and hopefully it helps everyone. The old um, rising tide rises all boats and all that. I love that, I love that. And you did mention about having a mixture of big and smaller creators, et cetera, et cetera. And that brings me nicely onto the playoffs because I feel like that was your aim when you started it. Do you want to tell me how that came about and why you started the FM playoffs with um, 
with the Kickstarter. Yeah, um, again, it was something that was in the works for a good few months before we actually got started. Um, I'll be totally honest, the reason that we didn't start was probably because of me, not because of Keg. He was all in on it. I kind of had a fear that it would just be seen as a B-Tech showdown ripoff. And that's what made me a bit hesitant to just jump straight in with it. But what kind of made me get over that was, like, the showdown's only a certain size. Only a certain amount of people can get in it. And more and more creators were coming out at the time. And I was looking through just a Twitch list at one point of all these different creators who'd been streaming regularly on FM. And I thought, there's so many people there that there's more than enough room for more than one tournament, one competition. So as long as we make it unique, why not? Let's go for it. And just when I was about to kind of get over that hump and go for it, FM Trek got in touch with me, um, Trek Artista as he was then, and basically pushed me over. He said, right, we need to do something. The time's come, let's let's get it, let's let's go. So he deserves a fair bit of credit for the playoffs happening as well, because without him, I don't know if I would have got started the same way. And then the format, how did you come about the format? It, we started off with 10, um, but I, I always wanted the two groups idea because I felt that that gave it something unique and something different that, that showed it wasn't just copying what was already out there and it also meant I could use my database skill side of things so it wasn't the easiest to copy it would keep us unique as well since then I have shared it out to allow people to, to do the same thing right enough um, but at the time I wanted us to be different and I wanted us to stay different so that was the, the logic behind it and I think it's it's really worked, but moving up to 12 teams was the biggest thing we've done because initially there was always a bye week and the bye week didn't really work when people had a week off just to sit about. And we've been able to throw in two extra competitors every time. There's no weeks off other than the, the quarterfinal to semi-final, but the group winner deserves that, I think. And it just all flows really nicely now. We've got a nice routine going and everyone knows what, what they're doing with it, so it's it's great. So what part are you responsible for? It changes. Um, it changes from month to month. So well, I've, I've become a wee bit more hands-off now, which I had to do. Like, it's hard to to give away responsibility when it's your baby. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, um, it's really difficult to kind of pass that to someone else. But we've now got to a point where... I knew that I wanted Scooter to do the play-by-play when we started that because he's just, he's a consummate presenter and he he's the perfect guy to give everyone a bit of time, a bit of limelight. So I I, I did the first play-by-play or two and I, I, I made sure that he was ready to do that. He now controls that and the lineups, so I just leave him to do that himself. Um, we're, I, here's a wee exclusive for you. We're now going to have a Saturday show when the draft's on as well wow. um, which Maladin is going to run and again he has sorted his own panel for that I've given him free reign over that as well um, so all I really do now is help out in the, the social media side of things and kind of oversee it as well so if anything goes wrong I can step in and help but Cam is the only Cam behind the Cam does basically all the back behind the scenes stuff the admin um, unless he's in the tournament in which case I pick it up yeah. but that was something else I was keen on like making sure that everyone that helps out does get a shot on it at some point as well because um, it's only fair so tell me about Scooter because I know like so behind the scenes I think I gather it's you Keg Cam and Scooter I'd say you're the main four, and, and Maladin as well I'd say you're <laughs> the main five people behind the scenes um, yeah. Tell me, like, why Scooter? Like, Scooter is great. Don't get me wrong; he's absolutely brilliant. But what what did you see in Scooter to think, yeah, this is my guy to lead the play by play? It goes way way back. Like, I was the first FM or Scoot had ever came across on Twitch, which is a really oh, funny wow. thing to think back on. He was on his honeymoon in the Caribbean, 
and he somehow fell upon me. I'm not quite sure how it <laughs> happened, but... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's in the Caribbean, right? So Pina Colada in one hand, his partner he, is there, had a few. Beach, <laughs> right? and somehow, some, he comes across you, I love that. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It and is. It just so happened, it was when the CPL had just been announced, the Canadian Premier League, yeah. and he mentioned it, and I had said I'd seen all the kits, and Valor was my favourite. And he's a Valor fan. That's his local team. So that started something. Suddenly he's gifting subs left, right and centre and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed going, this guy's throwing money at me, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and it's grown from there. So obviously he wanted to get going, he started. and He's just, he's one of the most genuine people I've ever met. And that's not even just FM, just he's such a, a kind of pure-souled guy. Um and he, the other thing is, he's not innocent about it. He's quite happy to ex- express an opinion, but he'll always do so in the right way as well. So I, I can fully trust him. I know for a fact I can leave him in charge of that. He knows what he's doing on the technical side, but also if there's any if, ever any issues or whatever, he's one of the few people that I can just leave it and say, he's got it, he's in charge. And I know it'll be settled, right? So it's a massive weight off my mind um, when it gets to that side of things. No, I love that. He is a he is a genuine force for good, as are you. Um, and I will go into that in a minute. Um, so let's talk about Kegstar. You and Keg have quite a special relationship. You did a uh, network save last year. You've done, obviously, four bonded so much that you are now doing the playoffs together. Tell me how that relationship came about. Um, probably... Kind of again going way back to FM base. So, long story short, they had a stream team. It fell apart. Myself and Stanners were the only people left. So I assumed control of it. Um, and I'd got Scoot in. I'd got Keg in. I'd got other people in. I'd watched. I thought we we're quite similar. We'll get on well. Um, and it was a kind of collaborative effort at that point. Before that, all went south. Um. But I've known Keg for years and years through that. And that that stream team was such a good laugh because we were genuinely just mates. Um, and it, when it finished, it finished with all of us going our separate ways. So it was a, a suitable ending to it as well. We're still all friends now. We still all chat. Well, you can see Keg and Scoot and so on are still very much involved with things I do as well. And even guys like Mr. Tom Ox into Rose Ed, um, Zealand. Believe it or not, Zealand messaged me to get into that FNP stream team back in the day. And, wow. uh, Clates, Clates as well. Clates was on it that I'd got him in. But we used to we used to sit there and say that Z and Clates were going to get big. Mm. Like we could tell a mile off. Just they were so good naturally at it. Um and that's that was something that was really nice that came out of it that we're still all kind of friendly, we still all chat. I know some kind of groups or teams go quite badly but that one ended quite well for us yeah you know it's mad because i was just thinking this you've mentioned you you've mentioned keg you've mentioned scoot i've spoke to you all today so can i be the fourth amigo <laughs> why not dive in there's yeah. can i just be in the gang <laughs> <laughs> right. um so the playoffs how does one get involved in the playoffs so we've got a, a form to fill in um that if you go on the Twitter, it's in the bio. And what we do is we've got a set rule that from the last playoffs that's happened, only the semi-finalists get an automatic invite back. And we will always have at least three debutants every single run to make sure that people get a, a fair crack of the whip. So if you filled in that form, and that lasts for the whole of FM22, we use that form to work out who's coming next, basically. Um and it seems to work so far so good anyway We've, but for the seven seasons we ran it on FM21 we had 44 people involved in it in total which was great really proud of that because that's what it was made for it wasn't made to be the biggest or the best it was made to no, don't get me wrong we've, we take pride in it and I've heard Stinger in the last scouting centre say that we're maybe seen as a number two to which is brilliant for us if that's the way people perceive it. Um, 
it's ourselves wasting possession and the FM Super League I think are basically on the same level um, as it happens but it was made to give people a chance not only to play in a tournament but to get to know other people and network that way and it's been a great success on that side of things yeah I think wasted possession were doing drafts way before yeah. anyone else but I think they professionalised when the playoffs came around so I feel like you guys are trendsetters in, in, in the rest of the tournament scene because I don't feel like if you guys started would wasted possession have professionalised so much Super League didn't exist at the time so I feel like you guys are kind of trendsetters in that way by you guys forming this tournament it's kind of made everything else bigger and better I'd like to think so um, like without trying to sound big headed about it I think we opt a game graphically for anything out with the showdown the showdowns are on another level entirely and we are aspiring to, to get there at some point but between myself and Keg like I think again gradual minuscule improvements every time our graphic game gets better every time um, the way we're presenting things gets better every time and we're getting more and more numbers watching it every time as well which tells me we're doing something right um, so yeah it's, it, we're really good friends with the guys at Wasted Possession like Sally and Stick and, and so on and we exchange things all the time as well so that helps and obviously the Super League you've got to give credit to FM Works with his graphic stuff it's always on point so we're again we're, we're challenging each other and getting better together I mean then you let Ali win the last one and he ain't that shut up about it and, and he ain't shut up about it I mean his, I was bad when I won the Super League shout out to Works there's the trophy but Ali Ali's 10 times worse than, look I have never I imagine I'm quite annoying when I win because it, it's by design right <laughs> Ali's made me hate him, so great job, Ali. And I and I, I love Ali. Um, but yeah, that's madness, isn't it, that he, he won the Super League? I'm sorry, I he, he won the playoffs, Ali. I'm essentially Tony Khan in this scenario and I've created the next big heel. He's the MGF in this scenario. Which is mad, right? Because, like, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the glasses and stuff as well. Like, what is he doing, man? Stop it, Ali. <laughs> Chabody G. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Okay, um, so there's a lot of talk about diversity in the FM community and sometimes there being a lack of it or, or maybe sometimes some of the uh, underrepresented um, streamers in these competitions. Um, Nathan B is somebody who always brings it up and chat to Nathan B, you know, fighting for the cause. Is this yeah. something that's a consideration for you guys when you guys are picking people to be involved? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't go out of our way to specifically pick someone that, say, for example, is a female creator. We we do everything on merit, but at the back of my mind, I'm always keen to make sure that opportunities are given out fairly and distributed fairly. And luckily for us, the way that the, kinda, the cards have fell, I think we've done quite well in that regard in terms of representing different communities within the main community of FM. So... Like, for example, in terms of female creators, we've had Katarina, we've had Katie, um, we'll probably have more. I can't really give away names, but we'll probably have more yeah. in the not-too-distant future. Um, we've had Nathie B in, we've had Wolfie, we've had Your Good Self. Um, so, yeah, it's it's something that has just occurred naturally, but it's always something we're very aware of as well, because... <laughs> Me, myself and Keg and Scoot have had this chat, Maladin and Sai Maggio as well. You, you don't just want to have a tournament with 12 middle-aged white FM creators. You want to show the diversity of the community. Um, and it's something that we, we have done up to this point. Yeah, no, 100%, I do agree with that. So in relation to that, though, is there like a minimum standard that everyone has to meet, though, to be involved in these tournaments? I, I can't really speak for other ones. I can only speak for us, but the only criteria we've got is that you are streaming FM or creating content on FM. So we're open to YouTubers as well. Um, but basically, if you're in, you live stream your side of things. And that's kind of it, really. So you look at someone like Draconis who managed to get in, who's uh, not long started streaming. Um, so you can get someone like that 
on the flip side, we've had Tom FM, we've had Work in the Space, we've had Foxy. So guys that have been there and done it over years and years and really, really established themselves. And that's, I think, the secret to why we've been successful is we bring these people together that might not normally come across each other in their, their usual schedules. And when they play each other, they chat away with each other. So, like, one of the big successes I think that we helped to facilitate was Curtin and Miju meeting each other. And I know the two of them are quite friendly now. Yeah. But Miju is quite down on himself and he really shouldn't be because he's a cracking streamer. Um, and obviously he's very good at the game. He's won things. But I'd like to think we helped to give him that wee boost of confidence when he did come through and he won it and he beat the likes of Curtin and so on. And again, that's something we, we aspire to keep doing. That's great. Was there any hesitation from yourselves in relation to having some of the showdown lot onto the playoffs? No, no, I wouldn't say so. I know Ben made a, a comment or two in chats he's had previously about how we never approached people, but I don't think that's true because we had Foxy in our very first tournament. Um, we've we've never consciously avoided approaching people that have been in the showdown. In fact, I think. If you look back at most runs, we've probably had an X showdown competitor in it now, and the vast majority of them. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that, like the other thing that Ben said that was quite interesting to me was that nobody had approached those guys for for help, and that's right because I hadn't, um, Keg hadn't. But the reason was we wanted to do something different. We didn't want to be the same. Um, so that's why. We didn't, and I think it gets overlooked to the likes of ourselves from Wasted Possession have an entry form. So it's a very different style. It's a community tournament. It's not like a kind of content behemoth that thousands of people watch. It's very much an open to any creator type idea. It's got a different, well, a different kind of end goal, I guess, is the easiest way to explain it. Any end goal that involves Alistair not winning it, I'm all for. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely now the end goal, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll even take McKins, for God's sake. This is what I've led to now. This is, this is where don't, I've come to. Don't take McKins. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about Showdown then. Um, obviously, you've had Ben on the play-by-play. -play. Uh, yes. I think he was there season six, I think it might have been, um, or, or season five. It was the one before last, I think, um, <laughs> the, the one that I was doing play-by-play play on. Is there something that you do? Would you be willing to be involved in the showdown? I'd love to be involved in it. Um, I'd said that previously. I ha I've had one opportunity to be involved uh, way back on the lowdown, and I couldn't do it, but it's just one of these things. Um, and I'd mentioned at the time, look, if, if you ever need me, give me a shout, I'm here. So we'll wait and see what happens, but... Obviously, I'm a busy man as is, so it's, if I don't get into it, it's not a hassle because I'm filling my, my time out as it is, but it is an opportunity I'd love to have, yeah. And that's great to say. It's great to see competitions working together. Yeah, absolutely. That that's It was something I was really keen on. Um, obviously, we, we announced the link-up between the playoffs, waste of possession and Super League for the champions getting an invite in, to each other's tournaments. And that was important to me because it shows that despite the fact that we're in competition to an extent, we're all striving for the same thing. And at the end of the day, it's for the good of the community. And then you've also partnered up recently, I think, with Full Time Prince, um, Sweet Left yes, Foot's little project. Yeah. Uh, I say little project, I don't mean that at all. Sweet Left Foot's <laughs> um, project and, and his Full Time Prince. Tell me how that came about. Uh, basically, Mike got in touch with all of us and said... Do you want to do something? And you, I know you guys are all linked up. So yeah, I'm always happy to support something that's positive. That's from an FM creator, and he's put a power of work into that. His sweet left foot, and uh, you can tell it just looks really professional. And he's got the pricing right. I feel like a lot of the time when these things are done, they seem like a wee bit of a a stretch in pricing, but he seems to have got everything bang on. Um, so it was a no brainer. For us, anyway. Mate, I'd have gone 50 quid. <laughs> I'd have Make gone 50 quid. Show me the money. I'd have gone 50 quid. 
<laughs> laughing all the way in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get no orders. Sad. Um, <laughs> so what are your future plans for the playoffs? Just to get bigger and better every time. Um, I, I know I've said that a few times now, but it's that incremental improvements I generally apply to everything I do. That If I can come away from a playoffs knowing that it was better than a previous playoffs, even if it's just in one aspect brilliant, we've done what we're meant to do. If there's not been an improvement, then we go back to the drawing board and make changes. But I think thus far, we've not really had one that I don't feel, I don't feel has improved somewhere. And it's getting bigger and better now that we're going to have the Saturday and Sunday shows on its own channel is the other big thing. Now that we've got its own um, FM Playoffs channel on Twitch, potentially that could get affiliated potentially I could then have a moats, who knows we'll, we'll play that by ear and see what people want but I, I, ultimately I'd love to get to the stage where say in a year or two that other people could be responsible for running different bits of it and I could just be there to help as and when but that would be the ultimate in it being a community tournament that for, with the best world, well in the world people won't see it as myself and Keg's creation they'll see it as the FM community tournament and that's why he says in the bio the premier FM community tournament because that's what the end goal is we want it to be kind of as cheesy as it sounds for the community and by the community that's pretty cool that so that's your gift to the community isn't it I wouldn't say it's a, as a gift because someone would have done it at some point if we hadn't um, I mean you're being modest there no nah, I don't these things always happen eventually yeah um, it just so happened that we kind of took the bull by the horns and went with it at that point. So it's um, it's, it's the way it happens with most content creation things. And again, this has been a, a lively debate recently that if you don't do something, someone will eventually do it if it's a good idea. So it, it was never about, like myself, it was never about Keg, it was never about anyone else getting big off it or getting a boost off it. Like we did it because we wanted to not only get it started but also be part of it and to get an opportunity that way and I haven't really taken my opportunities but we don't talk about that <laughs> yeah I mean we won't talk about your performances in the playoffs no no we'll we'll leave that with Stinger right uh, okay you know what I, I feel like I have to be equal right let's talk about your performances I mean what's happened oh, here we go what's happened in them I'm not very good at PvP does mm. um I'm striving to get better at it. Yeah. But I played very little PvP seriously up until going into the playoffs. And I've realised the gulf because only then have I started doing other tournaments as well. And I'm slowly but surely getting there now. Mm. I'm feeling a lot more confident now, but it took me a long time to work out how to prepare for these things. In the last playoffs, I just didn't have time to prepare because I did the database, <laughs> the Scottish database, all the way up to the night before. And then I just sat there going, well, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, I was going to say, because it just says so, you're getting better. And I was going to say, so where did you finish in your last playoffs performance? Right. Yeah, I literally went in with a short list of 20 players <laughs> and a formation vaguely in mind I hadn't saved. So that explains quite a lot, I think. Yeah. Uh, budgets are over, right? Just so you know, if you ever want me on there, just no budget, <laughs> I'm there. Uh, budgets, uh, too much work, too much work. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, it's great to speak about all of that and it's great to hear your thoughts on diversity, the playoffs, working with other company um, competitions as well. It's great to hear all of that. Um, let's get back to your streaming and, and what's been your streaming highlight so far? I think FM Game Blast yes. was probably my highlight because, again, it was something that I put together on quite short notice and luckily so many people came forward and wanted to get involved. Like, we did 72 hours straight of Football Manager on a single save. And it was just such a laugh. We raised five grand for the charity, which is just mad. Like, it's such a good cause. I think we were in the top five of any people who raised money in Game Blast for Football Manager, a niche community, which is wild as well. So that, like, being part of that, it was a squad of 23 people in the end, if I remember rightly, that all took part, 
all three hour slots. Um, that that was huge, not just because it was great fun and got to meet people and so on, but it resulted in some genuine good being done as well. It's mad how much good you actually do in this community. Like, as in, it's it's amazing to see. Like, everything you do seems to be geared up for the community and trying to do good for others. Well, it's something I, I do like to, like... I think the easiest way to to explain it is I, I I never went into content creation thinking I'll be full time at this. The way the way I look at it is and I still look at it to this day, is it's something I enjoy doing, it's something I enjoy devoting time to. And if I can do some positive things off the back of that, even better. So yeah, I'll I'll always throw myself head first into community things, into charity things. They don't always work. That's important to point out as well. It's not always been successful. But when it does work, it's it's obviously great. And it's not just me though. It's there's a lot of people that work together on these things. Like Game Blast, for example. Again, that's where Cam helped a lot, Keg helped a lot, Scoot. It's usually the same kind of people, in all honesty, that they really help with these things. So I can't I can't take full credit. Right, it's amazing to hear, Muzzle. It really, really is. What have you found most difficult about streaming? Oh, that's a good question. The thing that is most difficult about streaming is continually trying to be different. Because sometimes you can get into a space, and it's happened a few times with me, that you get comfortable and you stop changing, you stop upgrading, and you're not standing still at that point, you're going backwards. Because... Every single time something new comes along with some something new, you're losing ground. And ultimately you want to continue to get better, not just in numbers and that side of things, but in what you're putting out there. I'd like to take great pride in my stream and the things that I've added to it, all that kind of thing. Um, and it's just a, it's a challenge sometimes to force yourself to continually improve without just getting kind of content so what did you do to overcome that challenge watching other people do it um, and learning from them I tell you there was one main one when Josh Peach got started mm. he was just out of this world for a guy that would not long start streaming but you can tell that that's his job as well in terms of production quality because everything was so good and even though he was still learning the ropes and the communication side of things, the chat side of things, everything was great. Clates was another one that I watched his early streams and everything was so good in terms of the effort he put in creatively. Uh, creatively. He was bang on with the chat though. Like, he was just such an natural. And and that, that kind of bounces off me that, that I watch these people and I think, well, they've just started and they're better than me. Why am I not doing that? Why am I not thinking about these kind of ideas? And then I'll go away and spend a couple hours and kind of video editing and whatever else. Add something new to the stream and think, right, that's good, but what's next? And you just need that wee spark now and again. Well, I love your intro stream, your intro screen, sorry. Uh, that's something you, you've added recently, isn't it? Like within the last yeah. few weeks or so. Um, and then you've obviously had a total revamp of your streaming setup, haven't you? Yeah, so... Um, I haven't told the missus how much it cost, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've I've actually invested in a proper standing desk now that'll stand me a good good few years, um, get an extra monitor. So I'm constantly trying to give myself the tools to make things better, as well, um, and th that's the end goal. I just I want to put out something that I can be proud of. Ultimately, and it is going constantly getting better because if it's standing still, I won't be proud of it. Yeah. Um, YouTube is something you haven't quite uh, dedicated as much time to. Is mm -hmm. there a reason why? Time. Time is a reason because I've only just started planning ahead with a few YouTube series up to this point. It's more It's more been a vault channel. My uh, my YouTube for like my old FM Euros were all saved there. Um, old kind of BSC Broomhill games have been saved on there. But 
I've, I don't want to do something if I'm going to do a half-baked attempt at it. And I've not really had the time up till now to, to give YouTube a proper go. And if I wouldn't be content with the content that's on there, I, I don't do it. So I've now managed to earmark a little bit of time where I can do maybe one video a week and then split that into two. So something I picked up from Stinger's chat with you was a short and sweet. I think I'd be in danger of going too long for. So maybe record, say, a 15-minute video, split it into two. So you've got your your short snappy videos and we'll see what happens I'll, I'll experiment with a few things and try them out and see but Twitch has always been the main focus for me up to this point I think it's interesting you saying that you've never wanted to do this or you don't expect to do this as a full time career do you think that helps you massively in how you approach content I think it majorly helps mentally because you see a lot of people struggling with it from a mental point of view, that pursuit of numbers and growth and, and so on. Whereas I, I see it as fun. I see it as, like, that and football together are my hobby when I'm away from work. So it, it, it definitely helps, but I put the same amount of pressure on myself, I would argue, because I'm, I'm always committed to, to making things better. So... Yeah, I, I guess it, it's a different kind of pressure. I'm putting pressure on myself to to make things better, but I don't feel that pressure of you need to make this work because otherwise it's not going to work as a living. And I'm... Like, don't get me wrong, if I had the chance to do this as a living, content creation, I'd love to do it. But I've always got little irons in the fire for different things I can do um, career-wise. So... It's just never got to the point where content creation's been part of that. If it does, we'll wait and see. I think that's a very healthy mindset to have, to be fair. Enjoy what you're doing and then take it from there. And it maybe puts me at a slight disadvantage from some people who are so driven that they want this to be their career. But at the same time, it's it works for me. And I'm, he I'm happy and, and healthy doing it. So I don't see any reason to change it for now. I see, I think it gives you an advantage, especially at the level that you're at. And I'll tell you why. Um, and, and, and sorry, what I mean by that is you're, you have no plans to make this a full-time career at this stage. Because of that, it's allowed you and opened up so much opportunities because you're always able to give your best. So you, you're a Twitch partner. Not many people become that, especially in the football manager community. Mm. You have got this um, collaboration with Broomhill. You do all the database stuff. Like, because you're not having the pressure of putting this as a full-time career before you're ready to or before you're able to, I think it allows you to give your best. And I think that's kind of, that's kind of the drama that we're having in Football Manager content creation at the minute because people who aren't anywhere near that level are putting that pressure on themselves, which is ultimately a self-fulfilling pro prophecy because you're defeating yourself. Yeah, and there's a lot of good help out there from the, the bigger guys just now who have been there and done that. Like, I, I watched Loki's video. Um, I watched Ben's stream the other night. Um, I've seen Lujo tweeting about it as well. The, people just need to listen to these guys that know what they're talking about. I think, without... Like, there's a lot of tweets that, that go out there kind of expressing the frustrations of, I'm not growing. This isn't happening. That's not happening. Sometimes you just need to, instead of sitting down and reflecting like that, you just need to think, well, that's not working. Let's do something different. And that mentality shift, I think, would help a lot of people. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And I think that's what it comes down to ultimately. Nothing you do should be harming you. Yeah, And absolutely. if you're putting totally yourself agree. in that situation to be harmed, well, that's where you've got to evaluate whether it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on from that, and, and <laughs> this question is kind of ironic, what's the best thing about being a content creator? Uh, the interaction, yeah. without doubt. I just, I love being able to go live and having people there to chat football with. Um, if anyone hasn't seen my uh, my streams, 
I suspect there will be quite a few out there that might not have seen them. Um, my chat is less about the game a lot of the time and more about what's going on in the world of football. And there's a lot of times where it'll go in different directions, but it's more real life chat. And I just, I love having that that balance. The, the game is there and obviously when things happen, people react and it becomes a big thing. It's usually me bottling things that gets the reactions. But like, we'll chat Scottish football, we'll chat about kind of Rangers and Celtic in Europe, we'll chat what's going on down south, this national team. And it, it, it gives, it just gives you a really nice kind of feeling I'm looking forward to, to going live because you just know it's basically the, the equivalent of going to the pub and having a chat with your mates about football but in a weird way through the online sphere for a guy who's maybe not the the most confident in person to person situations it suits me quite well So what are your future aims in relation to everything that you're doing? What are your future aims for content creation? See, this is a, a really hard one because I would have said partner before I hit it. Yeah. And that was always the kind of, there's the end goal because I never thought I'd get there. Um, in terms of an end goal, I would love to be in a situation where things continue to, to get bigger, continue to improve, but maybe even making it a part-time part of my career. I, I don't ever see it being full-time, but if I was in a situation where I was able to work, say, three days a week and devote the other two days to full-on content, I think that would be just the dream scenario for me. Mm -hmm. That I wouldn't have the, the worry or the pressure of needing to make ends meet that would probably scupper a lot of my content because a lot of it is based on me having a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can devote more time to it because the one thing that limits me is being able to put extra time in. Um, and like, obviously, things like family commitments and so on, I'd never, I'd never take time away from that. So something would need to give and that would be the scenario I would. So last question, Marza, and thank you so much for this. I mean, I've really enjoyed my, um, my talk with you. But I always ask this and I think it's a, it's a great you're a great person to ask this question to considering how many fingers you've got in different pies but if there was one piece of advice you could give to a new content creator what would it be? If you want to do something watch the people who are the best at doing it apply what they do well to your own thing and do it the hardest thing to do for a streamer is how to go live for the first thing um, and I, my first ever stream, I hesitated over it for a couple of minutes. I sat there, the mouse just balancing over the go live button. But until you do it, you'll never know. But don't go in unprepared is what I mean by that. So, like, I, I didn't go live in a stream until I'd watched. But four or five really, really good FM Twitch streamers, and I thought, right, I can take that from them. I'm, I'm good at that so I can learn from that I'm not so good at that so I'm going to watch how he does that and then I went for it and you'll learn very quickly what you need to improve on when you're when you've started but give yourself a reasonable starting kind of platform because if you start and everything goes wrong you're probably not going to give it another go so at least give yourself an opportunity when you're getting started is what I would say No I love that I love that Maza where can we find you on your socials? Um, so it's a bit everywhere now. Um, at Moza Plays on Twitter is probably the easiest because then you'll find everything to do with me. Um, Twitch.tv slash Moza on there. Um, Instagram Moza Plays FM is a handle on there because for some reason somebody took Moza Plays, thanks, whoever that was. <laughs> um, Maladin, Maladin. <laughs> probably Mal. Let's, let's just blame Mal, shall we? But yeah, um, Twitter's the main place because you can find me anywhere through Twitter. No, thank you so much. Uh, Marza, I really do appreciate this interview. Thank you for making time to do it. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Just th thank you very much for having me. I've really enjoyed being on and kind of shooting the breeze. Appreciate you. No, I appreciate you too, Marza, and everything that you've been to the community. That's it, viewers. I hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, Marza, a bit of everything. Database maker, 
um, streamer, YouTuber, podcaster, head scouts, blogger, <laughs> like like it's literally a bit of everything. And and I hope Jack you've enjoyed. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed this interview. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to a thousand subscribers, so that would mean the absolute world to me. Leave a comment below. Let me know who you want on future episodes of the Scouting Centre. I'm literally approaching everybody. We are booked up until January and I've got plenty of slots available coming forward. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.